Buyer's Q&A. If you take a look at the second, the back page of your agenda, I put some questions there that buyers frequently ask. So I thought if we have a discussion on that, we could share ideas and talk about uh, how we answer these questions. Because these are normal things that your buyers are going to ask. Here's one. Here's the first one. If I change my mind and don't buy the property, do I get my deposit back? Within the contingency time frame. Within the con I hear within the contingency time frame. I hear a yes. What else do we have? Do I hear any no's? If you pass out the contingency, I can default. Oh, now, now he's adding to his answer to make sure it's right. <laughs> Anyone else? Any no's? Depends how far you're in the transaction. Depends how far. I think that's, yeah, depends how far in you're in. You're into the transaction. Anything else? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, you mean maybe. Barry may have had an had a experience before with this. So how does it work? Let's talk about how it works. If the buyer changes their mind, it depends on why they change their mind. If they don't like the house, they could say, I don't like the house. And within the contingency time frame, they can cancel. So what do they do? What do they do to cancel and get their deposit back? Home inspection. <laughs> they may have. What do you cancel home inspection? Home inspection, let's, let's get back to that because that's, that's an interesting point. So what happens first is you do a notice of cancellation, you send that contract document and you say, I want to cancel. And then what happens next? Escrow sends theirs out and then both parties sign and then they, give the, they distribute the deposit back to the buyer. What happens if the seller doesn't agree? Even though you, you cancel within the inspection time period, and the seller goes, I'm not going to sign that, that escrow cancellation because I want that money. Arbitration. Arbitration. Um, you think so? I had one like that. Like negotiation on both sides? It could get there. It could get the arbitration, negotiation because on both sides. Because you can open escrow another buyer if you haven't canceled. Yeah. So. Okay, they can't open a second escrow if the seller doesn't cancel. So that gives you leverage to say do that. Well, isn't that escrow actually canceled? They just didn't get their deposit back. I mean, the escrow is still not open. It's been canceled. The contract is canceled. The escrow is still open, so the money's there. You can use a different escrow company. Yeah, you could do that. You, 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 you could. You could. But that's dangerous. I mean, you have two. Especially if there's a big deposit, depending how big the deposit is. It could be. Yeah. Now, we're talking about if you cancel an inspection. Yes, Glenda. Interpleader. Right, right, right. So. Escrow won't hold the money after 30 days. They're going to give it to an interpleader and say, you guys hold the money. Is it 30 days, Tammy? Or is it, does it depend? It's usually long days. Okay. So here's the point. The original question was, if I, if I change my mind and I don't want to buy the property, do I get my deposit back? Yeah, the answer is, if you, if you cancel within a t contingency and within that accepted time frame, then you can, your, the contract says you get your deposit back on, based on 02 or 03. The way that you would get your deposit back is by everyone signing the documents. What you need to remember is there's an outside chance the seller gets all mad and doesn't sign those documents and the money gets held up. So I wanted to bring up that point because it's, it's two parts. It's one, knowing the whole picture, and two, how to answer that question with your buyer. Here's another one. What price should I offer? So your buyer asks, hey, I don't know all these numbers. What price should I offer? What do you usually say? You give them a range. You give them a range. Yeah, okay. Okay, you give them a range, show comps, so it could be this range to this range. What do you do, Jackie? comps for you, and then from there we can decide. And then we can decide. Anyone else? Do you, does anyone just give a price? Say, I think you should pay this price. No way, I got into some You got in trouble because of that? That could be troublesome. Anyone else? No? Come on, Nick. I do exactly <laughs> what that you said. I mean, I sit down with a CME and I give them a price per square foot. Yeah. And we look at the square footage, and we ascertain whether it's well priced or not, and where the offer should be, okay. and what they're comfortable in, in offering. Okay, so let's say Sean's. Oh, Thea, go ahead, Thea. Well, <coughs> in this market, especially with multiple offers, sometimes you have to tell them you have to put in your highest and best offer, because I've talked to the seller's agent. There is a number of offers coming in. How much do you want it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that can be upsetting to people, but. Sometimes you have to give them that information. Mm -hmm. You're only going to get one opportunity. So if I'm talking to Phoebe and say, Phoebe, I don't know this stuff. You're the agent. Just tell me how much should I buy this place for? <laughs> what do you say? Come on, you're my friend. Just tell me. I, it's me. It's me. It's Henrietta. 
You won't tell him a price no matter what. Can you tell him a price? By law, can you tell him a price? Range with oh, the old escalation clause. Oh, that's a whole nother topic. So you don't, you won't tell them price no matter what. Can't you, in dual agency? I definitely stay away from that. In regular agency, it, it's it's a little risky. Price, you can tell them full price that you will hopefully buy a house. <laughs> uh, there's no negotiation. You got to offer full price on everything. No, I don't, I don't know about that. In this market, maybe. Okay, another question. What will my out of pocket? Uh, what will my out of pocket expenses be? I make lender and escrow to live. Lender and escrow. So what can you ask lender to do? Uh, escrow to do. Hut. Where's Jenny? Jenny, how do you answer that question? What do you do when, when uh, your, your borrower comes and says, how much money am I going to have to pay? Okay, so it's going to depend. It's gonna depend. Yeah. It's going to depend on what, how they, what product they choose. And so an agent's going to send them to you about, uh, for that question, out-of-pocket costs, and you're going to give them an estimate, and then after they apply, they're going to get a good faith so estimate. You're going to give them an estimate, and it used to be we give them kind of a, a percentage of, of the price that they could count on, or like one. Yeah, 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 right. We used to give a percentage. That's a good point. We used to give them a percentage, and that percentage was, what would people say? One percent? Yeah, one percent of sales price. At any time it's one percent of sales price, I don't think it's going to be that accurate, though. But it gives them an idea that there's going to be a cost involved. And then you talk about what are some of the costs that they're going to have during the inspection period. I would home inspection, it, it, appraisal. And do, if it doesn't appraise, do they get the money back, Jenny? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Rem how many times we've had that situation? Remi please, I know the lender will too, but you as an agent, remind them that if it doesn't appraise or they do cancel and they've done the appraisal, that they are going to pay for that appraisal expense. Okay, let's, let's take one more. Let me find a good one. Oh, okay. I like this one. Can you find me a good deal? Can you find someone a good deal in this market? You are all real estate agents. Ooh, he's all, I got a deal you like. I got a deal for you. Right. Here's the thing. Everyone says yes. Okay. Who am I going to put on the spot? Okay. Tell me one. What? A good deal. You just told me there's a good deal. She's going to say her own listing. <laughs> Couple A 350. You said Haula. 299 up there. 299 for a home? 299, cottage, not CPR, nothing. 4,500 square feet. Okay. Yeah, but wait, isn't there going to be like five offers? No, we're not pitching listings yet. We're not pitching listings yet. Nice try, Phoebe. Always get them with the interest rate. Always touch them with the interest rate. Interest rate, it's a great, it's 4%. Really low right now. But honestly, don't worry. Only the whole world will see this. <laughs> Are there good deals in this market? Can you find good deals in this market? In the market, we can put an offer on that too. Okay, so, yeah. competing with any other buyers. I like that. So Jackie's saying you go for for sale by owners where you're not competing with other buyers because no one can find them and you can get a good deal that way. On the regular market, it's tough to get a good deal because everyone sees it and you're competing with other buyers. How else can we get them a good deal? Oh, I love it. How about the ones that, not, uh, Ihi Lani, they go to the workshop and they just came by, back from the two day, they get the two day how to buy foreclosures and get a really good deal seminar, right? And they come to you, right? And they say, I want to get a good deal in a foreclosure. Is that where that people can find a good deal? Not necessarily. Yeah. The auction. The auction, maybe. But you said not necessarily. Well, you know, it depends on But they could the be. Could be. At, at the auction they could be. could be. If they're willing to go through the process. Yeah. If they have the time and the patience and, the, and they're willing to go through the, the entire process. They okay. have to understand how long that can take. Okay. Yeah, we saw Anuhea sold for four five seventy five four bedroom, two bath, 1,500 square feet. That was a good deal. We find them after the fact. But there's risks yeah. associated with that too because you don't get to Oh yeah, yeah there's, ri there's more risk involved when you're looking for that good deal when it's an REO or an auction, sure. Yeah, I, I think there's still good deals, but it's harder to find, like FISBOs, like figuring out if the foreclosure or the auction is a, is, is a good deal or not. And how about because it's so hard to get loans now, 
that substandard condition properties could be really good deals because there's not many buyers that can buy them. So there's, there's opportunities out there. It's just not as prevalent as it was in 2008, 2009.